Okay, so my name is David White, I'm Head of Digital Learning at the University of Arts London and I'm with... I'm John Martin, I'm an arts educator at the University of the Arts and teach on various courses and I'm also a research student here too. So recently we um, put together an event um, called uh, Network Making because these were two themes that we felt were important. Uh, the idea of networks... Um, and what they might be and how they relate to something that's certainly important at UAL which is, is the process of, of, of making and people came to that from the University of Arts London and, from, and uh, other people from other universities around the country and sort of uh, to kick that off we designed uh, a very interactive activity could you describe what it was? Yeah, so it was a, uh, essentially we, we constructed a, uh, or the beginnings of a space, uh, which was some um, pegboard panels um, strategically placed around the, the, the lecture theatre space. Uh, and with those uh, pegboard panels, uh, there were some, some prompts. Uh, and there was a bunch of materials, really importantly, uh, a bunch of stuff, some uh, paracord, string, um, pegs, dowel, uh, clips, um, luggage tag labels, things that people could utilise to begin to visualise networks in response to the various prompts on these on these panels. Yeah, and, the, and um, we were reasonably open with that. We asked um, Sheena Calvert and a couple of her students to help us facilitate that session, but we didn't really tell people specifically what we wanted them to do yeah. with that space. Yeah. Um, there were some labels on some, of the, on some of the pegboard areas. I think there was like tools and there was one that was called like desires or something like that, and maybe one that was called work. But other than that, we, we literally said um, build a network or your network um, and then and that's what people started to do so there must have been about 30 odd people yeah, there. I think so um, and how would you describe um, I mean there's images next to this uh, this recording that you can see and a, and a very short video so you see for yourself um, but how would you describe what then happened I think with all with all these things, you, know, you, you have an idea about about setting something up and providing some materials uh, and and suggesting that people get on with things. Uh, so the, the, the kind of the, the the idea and the prep is there, but you never know actually what is going to happen, and it could could you know it, it can go in all sorts of ways and it could fall flat. What actually happened was that really quickly people started grabbing stuff and experimenting with the. Um, with the kind of the physical objects, with the pegboard panels and these, you know, these other objects that were around the space, uh, to think about the the possibility of of joining things up, of physically making, I suppose, a connection, a web, a, a network of 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 physical material between these different things, and then putting these labels on. But probably most importantly, what went on was a it was a lot of talking. Uh, I kind of was walking around looking at, at different people getting into a really strange, interesting, personal conversations uh, about the things that they were either doing or thinking or problems that they were having or um, situations they were in. One thing that I really loved was that, 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 that one person became an additional uh, element in this space. So one person started getting string wrapped around him. Yeah. Uh, so he became a, you know, a kind of a, a, a physical living part of this um, visualised network. And it was just a, I don't know, it was just a, a fairly, I don't know, very a very fast and fluid and, um, I don't know, personalised, I guess, response to to the situation that people found themselves in. People kind of seemed to embrace it, which was really exciting. And in terms of... So let's just um, sort of think about our motivations for setting it up. Mm. Because, I mean, I've got no doubt that people found it useful, whether that was through the, the sort of the making or the conversations or how they related. Um, but, you know, there's a reason why we decided to do that and I, and I think that that reason was was 
um, I'm not sure how to put it, whether it was a sort of teaching and learning reason or a, a collaborative reason. Um, I mean, f- for me... How about, how about all of those? Could, yeah, I think so. I think it, it I suppose. I suppose, for me, the point was that it was more than just a kind of way of getting people out of their seats. And... And I felt like if we were going to do an event on network making, then we should be making some networks, and yeah. to do that in a very in a very particular sense. So I so what I was keen on was creating the conditions in the room for people to 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 make a network. And I think you know one of a couple of things happened to me for me is. People started making that network literally with bits of cord and string and pegs. But it was clear, as you're saying, through conversations that people were making a network between themselves that sort of operated in parallel or intersected what they were making. Yeah. Now, I don't... I'm not sure to... I, I, I'm pretty confident that that was effective in terms of helping people to make connections amongst themselves because they were making something physical mm. and and I, I and my feeling is that there were aspects to what positive aspects to what happened that went way beyond what I'd think of as the post-it note paradigm mm-hmm. um, there was something because people had to get up and and and, and connect things together physically I think it helped create a stronger connection between them. Yeah. Conversa- I don't know if it's conversationally or psychologically. I, I, I wouldn't like to say. I think I think there's a I think there's a bunch of stuff going on there, and and, and I think that you know when you talked about about the rationale for doing it being teaching and learning, being collaboration, it's it's absolutely all of that. But it's also the fact that this in this environment is a it's a making environment. Uh, you, know, you mean the, the university? The university in general. Yeah. The university of the arts is a, is a is a is a place with making in in inverted commas at its at its core. Yeah. Uh, you know, creative endeavour uh, will make a product, whether that's a thing or a performance or a sound. You know, something is being uh, physically physically or, or something's uh, being produced. Something is being produced, and it's not necessarily text. <laughs> No, although it could be, it can be as part of something. Yeah. But but in a making environment, uh, I think I, I think part of the rationale for, for for this is understanding that in a place where you are making and where you're using stuff, material, again all these terms in inverted commas to produce something, that different sorts of conversations and thinking and um, ideation uh, go on because you are responding to the stuff and talking to people on a on a fairly basic level about the stuff and the stuff can be a wonderful conversation starter you know what do you do with this how, how do I get into this how, how do I use this yeah it's it's a it's a far more and there was definitely a kind of negotiation going on between people as to how to negotiate that proposition and that yeah. space and those materials yeah it yep. wasn't just one person went off and did all the work, if you like. You could see people gently responding to each other to sort of co, co-make in that sense. Gently responding to, to one another, but also gently responding to the materials. And I yeah. think that the, the, the materiality of this thing is so important. You know, you, you talk about, about the post-it note paradigm. Uh, you know, this, this thing of, okay, we're going to do an activity, and there are going to be post-it notes, and there are going to be hot tip pens. And we kind of understand that we, we get our post-it note and we kind of put our our marks on that post-it note and we stick it on the wall and that's great but actually if you're presented with, with some other things that are unusual and told to respond to them you also have to do a bit of figuring out of what they are mm-hmm. and you can you can do that haptically you know you can kind of feel your way through it or you can look at things or you can um, you know respond to things essentially or you can talk to other people about what you might do with those and what they mean to them and what they might have done with them and I think a lot of the the making that the making that came out of it in, in that sort of networked activity was perhaps the sharing of experience, the sharing of, you know, how you might have used this in other situations or how things can be transferred from one environment to another environment, which is kind of what happens in a studio. You know, you bring in your experiences, you bring in your stuff, and there's 
part of the um, affordance of that space is realising that there might be other ways to use something, that do something different, that give you a different kind of effect or a meaning or take you somewhere else, which is kind of fundamentally what this is about, right? Kind of taking you somewhere different. Well, and I think, and I wonder if there's something that's not as well understood as it could be, which is the the idea of thinking through making mm-hmm. rather than making being the result of thinking, if you like. I think it's it's better understood with with text, in that you might in that you, your ideas might develop through the process of writing. I don't know. Quite that's I, interesting. Well, though. yeah. Well, that's a huge area, obviously. Yeah. But I think, but that idea. I mean, it, it the the that principle of. Think, the value of thinking through making mm-hmm. rather than thinking then making see, was, was import, is, is an, to me an important aspect of what goes on at this university Absolutely. which, which um, I think could apply well beyond the disciplines that we have here and in higher education I suppose in, in, in an academic context I, I, I often feel is um, Sort of diminished. Its importance is diminished because because there's mm-hmm. something that is. It's, it, I mean, it's slightly Cartesian in the sense that that it just, because it involves the body, it can't be intellectual or whatever it might be. Mm-hmm. Um, and I also think that that links to uh, our sort of responses to ideas of play as well and and experimentation. Mm-hmm. So for for me, what happened was we. we that that environment was was partially designed to sort of have that thinking through making affordance to it, and it de- and it was definitely doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think either of us could necessarily specifically say what people took away from it, but they were obviously um, I think inspired's the wrong word, but that you could see people their minds there was were an, there was an engagement, right? People yeah. were were were. We're talking and thinking and doing that. That to me indicates an engagement. It wasn't just kind of an instrumental. We are painting by numbers here. Yeah. Uh, that, that 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 kind of teleological, you know, aim. Hmm. There, there was none. Uh, that the, the 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 aim was the process. The aim was to actually engage. And there was fundamentally, people were physically, hopefully mentally, intellectually. I would say so. Uh, stimulated in doing stuff. So yeah, without a doubt, uh, because there was that invitation to to kind of explore uh, without a sense of what this was intended to be. There were there were prompts. Well, okay, so there were prompts, and, yeah. uh, and we had introduced the event, yep. and people had turned up to the event knowing it was about network making. It was a bit of blurb on the web page where you signed up, but it was. I mean, I was keen to keep it fairly ambiguous because I actually wanted the, the, the thinking around what network making is to sort of emerge across the day mm-hmm. rather, than, rather than do that kind of slightly university thing of saying, well, we know what this is, so you can turn up and hear us tell you. Um, I, I wanted to be at the other end of that, that continuum, um, but I just wanted to pick up on something that you were saying, because this, this for me is, is crucial in terms of teaching and learning, is I found it quite distressing just how open the thing was because my instinct was if you don't give people enough instruction or enough scaffolding mm-hmm. the chances are they'll just you know you go hey here's some stuff mm-hmm. peg boards mm-hmm. start making a network yeah and then there's this fear that everybody will go, what? What are we supposed, <laughs> what, what are we supposed, what are we supposed to be doing? doing? Yeah. What's that? Now, obviously, everybody in the room was, you know, I think that room certainly skewed towards people that were comfortable at owning at interpretation and, and they yeah. had quite a lot of agency. I don't know what would happen if you did that in rooms with, with uh, different groups of people, mm-hmm. students who are, are studying at different levels. I don't know. Mm-hmm. From what I saw, I think it would still work. But I'm just acknowledging that it was there was a teaching and learning risk. Oh yes, as far as I was concerned. Yes, and I can remember I was talking to Catherine, who'd helped organise the event hmm. after after it kicked off, and talking about all sorts of practical things. And I, and I looked around from our conversation, 
about two minutes after we'd asked people to start and there were just people everywhere with scissors and cord and all the rest of it and I, I have a very clear memory of going oh, it's working yeah. I don't know exactly what's happening but it's yeah. working yeah. and like this massive amount of anxiety just fell away from me yeah. but it was it did it, it felt like a it didn't feel like the easiest thing we could have done that day it's not it's, and, and I think that again that's part of you're right, I think we have become, I think in this environment we are possibly slightly more comfortable with that sense of uncertainty and with that sense of, of uh, trusting that something will emerge through the process and then being able to, to judge that uh, on its merits uh, in relation to our marking criteria and our, and our you know, matrices around you know, how we judge success. Yeah. Uh, but I think that... that I think that that this approach to allowing that to happen is incredibly healthy in the higher education environment because as we increasingly get to a place where we are looking for proof, uh, we need, I think, to understand that the proof can be negotiated and, and that proof is, is demonstrable in all sorts of different ways. And actually your way might be text and my way might be image. And there is a negotiation between these things that, that allow us to perhaps see things on their merits and to judge what we've got from something for ourselves. And to say, well, actually, you know, this is all this process, Dave, this, this, this process of kind of playing with stuff and trying stuff out uh, and, and the mess that is made in that works because there is a recognition of the importance of reflection, reflection in action, reflection on action, a, a kind of a process of analysis, self-analysis of what you've done and what you've made and what the meaning is of what you have made for you. So in a way, you can set something up. You know, you and I can have an idea and we can have a conversation. We can go, yeah, that sounds really interesting for these reasons. And we'll, you know, we'll, we'll kind of put these things in place. But you're then inviting people to come along and respond to it, N not knowing how they will respond to it. And there is definitely a, a kind of a, a, an anticipation in that, because it could go in all sorts of ways. But I think the, the, the thing to recognise is that you're working with people who have agency in their different ways, and, and maybe our role as facilitators or educators or uh, people putting on an event is to allow people to come and to bring and to respond and to encourage them to then go away and think about what they've done as you say you know that the, the 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 invitation is there and there's a kind of a, a, a scaffolding to the day uh, to to you know to a day to a to a session to a course to a curriculum where you say you know we're going to be looking at this stuff and you'll probably kind of get some of this stuff out of it but actually, what people will get out of it has to be negotiated by them. And, and I think that whatever the educational level, we have to, to recognise that people will find different things in these experiences. And we need to support them to realise what they have found, which is of relevance to them in their practice, in their discipline, in their ongoing exploration of this territory. Uh, it, it can't be prescribed. You, know, you can have the matrices in place, but the matrices are there to, 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 to support rather than to tell people what they're doing. Yeah, and so, absolutely, and so um, in, in, in that sense, you, you're, you're creating the conditions for making and the conditions for reflection. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that's, I, I don't think that's necessarily an easy place for people. Um, I'm sure some of the people undertaking the activity that we sort of kicked off, if you like, or set in motion, some some people stood a little bit further away from it. Yes. Some people stuck one thing to it and then went and sat down. Yes. Some people stood around chatting, watching other people making things. And there's, so there's a kind of recognition there that people will engage it in different ways yeah. and that you can't... Um, I mean, this is something that I find with, with, with the digital is that you, you end up fetishizing very particular forms of engagement 
and forgetting that there are multiple forms of engagement, like mm. sitting and watching everybody else and thinking about it. Except in the digital, you have, you have there, there are terms for that, right, that, that are recognised and understood, and there is an appreciation of that. I mean, they're, they're, they're fetishisations all over the place. Yeah. But actually, you know, we, we, we do... I think we recognise across the board that there are lots of ways of engaging. Well, I, yeah, but I, I suppose what I'm saying is that, that that's part of the... Part of the ambiguity mm-hmm. is, for me, in the role of facilitator or educator, is recognising that there's an ambiguity in, at, as to how I can interpret how people are responding to something. You know, so there was there's no right way in my mind of how people should respond. I mean, apart from the fact that I wanted people to get stuck in, in one sense or another. You, I think you probably wanted to see people feeling that they could get stuck in. Yeah, I think you probably wanted to to feel that people felt they had a sense of being able to be there. Uh, but as you say, those people who, who chose to hang back or chose to observe, and I, I was one of those, uh, because you know I wanted to I wanted to see what was going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's that's a that's a really lovely space to be, uh, and it doesn't mean that you're not taking all sorts of stuff from what's going on. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I mean, <laughs> uh, ambiguity is again. I think we're probably more comfortable with that notion of ambiguity in this environment than, than other higher education establishments might be, perhaps. I don't well, know. Well, doesn't it, I mean, doesn't it to a certain extent come down to not um, walking into that room with... I think this is what I'm trying to say, is that I had to be careful not to have preconceptions about what the correct way was to engage in that activity. And I think that for ambiguity to exist and therefore that for there to be a space for people to reflect and interpret, if you like, you have to be careful to, to question whether you've decided that you know what the right answer is or a good answer is. Yeah. You have to be able to allow that to emerge. Now, for me personally, because just because of, of the kind of way I'm wired, I suppose you could say, I had to constantly police that in my own mind. Yeah. Because I dis- and you could see from the way I was writing notes about just putting together the activity that that everything everything I was doing was in response to a, a kind of assumed version of success. Yeah, and it was a real struggle for me. I, like I said, it was quite anxious. It was a real struggle for me to to put that down and and say and acknowledge there are lots of different versions of of success and there are lots of different forms of value that people might take away from this, different ways they might engage. And to allow that to happen was definitely a relinquishing of control. And I'm thinking in terms of, you know, you know, pedagogically I suppose, was it was it wasn't it wasn't especially comfortable until I saw what was happening. Yeah, and then that gave you a, a sense of a sense of making to which you then responded. I mean, you, you kind of responded intellectually, emotionally, creatively. But I think that that sort of that relinquishing of control is really interesting because I think that that's another sort of negotiation. It's a self-negotiation. We're constantly negotiating our our values and our wants and our desires and our expectations. And you know, you you talked you know a lot about about being comfortable and not being comfortable and it being difficult and i think these are things that that actually we might um we might gloss over or we might pretend that that actually education should be comfortable and straightforward and easy and it ain't you well know, i think there's, there's, for there's me a... that, sorry to interrupt but i think for, i think for me it comes down to that notion of risk mm. is that it's easy to talk about and we like the idea of risk oh yeah but the, but the lived experience of it isn't, hey, I'm being risky. The lived experience of it is, oh, this could just be a disaster. Am, am I completely wrong? Or, and also, am I just being unprofessional? Yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah. because I can't predict what's going to happen. Yeah. I, I, I don't know how people are going to respond. 
um, I had all kinds of little backup plans in my mind, little speeches I was going to make <laughs> if, if, if it just went silent. I'm glad you did. <laughs> well, I suspected you wouldn't because you, you, you're better at taking a... Uh, I think you're probably more comfortable with, with those ambiguous um, situations because of the work that you do relative to the kind of work I do. Um, that might not be the case. Huh. But I, I suppose it, it's important to acknowledge that it's, it's easy to talk about th- these forms of education and, 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 and working in ambiguity and, and, and having a very open activity and giving people materials and without expectations for what they'll do, but actually it, that's, it, it, it's, it's a harder path to take than standing up and giving a talk or doing a more... I, mean, I suppose it depends who you it are. It really it's depends for me. who you are. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, I, I would much rather be in a space where people are kind of doing stuff and, and, and finding out what they're doing and not finding out what they're doing and then responding to everything going wrong than I would be with you know, a kind of a, a bunch of stuff that I know I have to push across at the beginning and I've got to get... Well, I'm not even surgery. sure. I mean, I'm not even, I'm not even convinced you have a notion of things going wrong. I think you just have a notion of things happening. Or yeah, but 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 if things, I suppose if things don't happen, then that is things going yeah. wrong. Uh, and so maybe the stuff that I have in my back pocket is ways to kind of prompt people to make things happen, to make other things happen when the thing that I've wanted to happen isn't happening. Yeah. So again, it's another kind of form of negotiation of actually, yeah, I have. Ex- we all have expectations. We all walk into a into a pedagogic environment with a sense of what's going to go on and what we want to get out of it. And sometimes we are satisfied and mostly we get something different from what we expect uh, but but I think there's always this sense of right so where are we at and therefore what needs to happen next yeah. because because it's really difficult to see the arc of a session uh, really difficult for me to see the arc of a session I just you know I've got a sense of what I want what I'd like to, to, to be going on but but it will always be dependent on who's there and what's there and what goes on and what people have for breakfast that morning, you know? Yeah. No, I think it's a refreshing way to look at it. And just to put a kind of um, more sort of... Um, well, maybe a slightly more corporate higher education hat on, if you like. Um, we got evaluation forms back. Mm. And most people really enjoyed that activity and got a lot out of it some people less so Hmm. and I think you know it's one of the bits of it that what was open was the fact that we don't actually know specifically what people took away from that yeah so we were in the mildly luxurious position of you know it wasn't assessed apart from the fact that it's like a a quasi-social environment so everything's assessed because when, when you're watching somebody attach a piece of string from a board that says desire to a board that says work it's not like people aren't thinking about it yeah because uh, assessment is finding meaning in things right and assessing is evaluating what's going on right it, yes well yes absolutely um, but I suppose uh, one of the reasons that I felt like that I felt we could take that approach was because we didn't have a structured aim, yes. if you like, that was perhaps... Um, so, So, for example, we didn't have that kind of structure that would come with an assessed unit or module or something yes. like that. Now, that's not to say that you can't operate in that way within those kind of structures, and people do all the time around UAL. But again, I just wanted to recognise the particular environment we were in, yeah. in, in that sense. So it was... It, it, we, we have to accept that we can't quantify what people took away from that. We did. And that that's sort of part of it. So there's trust in, mm. in that way. Yeah. Mm. Trust, absolutely. But also, yeah, trust and belief. Uh, because, because, you know, we stand back and assess and, and look at, you know, look at kind of what came out of it in terms of the conversation. Uh, and, those feedback forms and think, yeah, okay, that, that sort of did certain things. But actually, and again, so much of what happens in these environments isn't immediately obvious. And the learning that goes on and the, the creativity that goes on and the making that goes on goes on 
beyond and outside. And I think as educators we have this sense of we need to have this overview of what people have done and what they have got out of it and it all needs to be um, recorded uh, so that it is... Like it's a hermetic thing. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And, and of course there are, there are really good rationales for that. Yeah. But we also have got to trust and believe that, that a lot of that learning continues to go on. And that, that an experience that you had six months or three years ago will suddenly spark something different and you will suddenly make a connection. You'll, you'll find a way of uh, drawing on that in something else that you're doing. So I think that for me it's really important that people... I really love the fact that those people got to have that experience because actually... I believe and trust that it will do something further. However, the the people that didn't get to have that experience can still draw on what they saw because the as you say, you know, there's 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 there are there are records of what went on. There are records of what went on in terms of, of images, in terms of, of conversation, uh, in terms of things that people will say to other people about what they did. And that will actually, hopefully, I mean, this is, this is where creative education sort of becomes pretty unaccessible. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it becomes something that, that, that morphs gradually and um, in ways that we can't quite see into other things. Things feed into other things. It's the thing about networks, right? Yeah. Networks feed other nodes. Uh, and there are things that come off those. That, 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 that sort of the mind map analogy of, 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 of having things that spark all sorts of different connections that go into different places which have got nothing to do with the thing that's at the centre. But they're all vitally important, right? Uh, and I think that if we're, if, we're, if we're looking at what happens in a session, uh, we then have a responsibility maybe to remember and remind and explore and talk about what we have found in other ways. So the, you know, the, the notion of, of, of why would people, why do academics publish? Uh, and and you know, why do people kind of talk about this stuff that's their own bit of research interest? And surely the point is to, to share and explore and allow other people to look and respond in a different way to somebody else's experiences. Yeah, ab- yeah, absolutely, and 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 whilst this this is a kind of our reflection on what we thought the sort of m- meaning of that activity was at one level, we're not specifically talking about the substance of the idea of network making. Mm-hmm. This is more of a kind of uh, a, a reflection uh, from a different perspective. But your point about connections, I think, is 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 one that bears uh, considering, mm-hmm. in, in the sense that one uh, one of the reasons that event was called network making is because it, of of that idea that we that we make in networks and that we make networks mm. and that good things come from making connections. Mm. You know, whether that's between people, across subjects, across disciplines, yeah. and also that we sort of reside to a certain extent in in those networks, whether that's you know at work or online or whatever it might be, mm. and and that the that one of the things that's intriguing is that we all visualise those networks differently. We don't actually have a particularly shared understanding of them. Mm. You know, one person visualizes a network as a collection of wires and satellites and stuff like that. Another person visualizes it as clusters of people mm. and, and everything in between. But actually, that that the principle of the network has become fundamental to how we how we are, how we become and exist, right? Yeah. And this all gets terribly philosophical and all the rest of it uh, very quickly, but. Uh, it was. It's intriguing to me that that activity. To come back to the activity, we were physically making a network, but also obviously there was a, 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 a non-physical network forming between the people in the room, which was, and that was that's something that's important to me, because for me, picking up on your on what you're saying there, 
is is the role of a significant part of the role of higher education is to create the environment and the conditions for connections. Yes. And that activity was like a like a microcosm of that philosophy, mm. if if you like. Mm. Because some of it was was very physical mm. and visual uh, and obvious and accessible, uh, and some of it was uh, inferred, and some of it was suggested, and some of it is unseen. Uh, some of it is a is a is a purely internal connection that people are making uh, because actually all this stuff that we're talking about, whether it's kind of physical material or, or ideas or um, or other people who have I don't know things that you can discuss and mm-hmm. and, and explore uh, are they are the stuff of education. All this stuff is the stuff of education. Uh, our education is not, you know, we, we might be learning a particular discipline. Uh, we might be, you know, exploring a particular subject. And there are therefore things that are kind of fundamental to be looking at in that. But actually the education is all around that. The education is uh, a process of seeing how those things fit within the wider subject and seeing how that wider subject fits within the, the wider world. Uh, and seeing how you can negotiate your path through that subject, through that discipline, through that set of skills that you're acquiring or that set of um, ideas that you are assimilating and how you can how you can put those things together. But not just assimilating but generating. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah, so that would be the hope, right? Yes. Is that, is that um, y- you know, ambiguity if we think about that in, in from a pedagogical point of view mm. is 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 not there to um, through a lack of planning it's there deliberately because it in, for me it increases the, the 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 probability that people will will, will be generating their own thinking mm. rather than simply assimilating other people's yeah now could, it's a combination of both in education. I wouldn't want to say that it was one or the other, but I think certainly by the time you're in higher education, at least some of it should be a, a space that is ambiguous enough that it allows you to become... Yeah, I think that's, God, I think that's so interesting. I think that, that, that the higher education environment is a, it is a, a space of transition. Mm. It's a space of... Um, Moving from compulsory education to a a world mm-hmm. maybe of of uh, professional practice. I'm not Sometimes, sure what I mean, that's a, yeah. a, that's a massively complex idea. But you know, uh, uh, to to a world of of beyond compulsory education, and and higher education is this this space which has got some scaffolding and some structure and some assessment points and some matrices and some, you know, kind of um, useful uh, disciplinary, wide disciplinary subject material in it that you are negotiating. But but the, the I don't know, I suppose the, 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 the notion of, of being in this space is to work out how you take it and use it to go forward into what else, whatever else is out there for you. So there's a, there's this sort of. It, it, I think I think higher education is a is probably a space of ambiguity because we can't ever be quite sure what we're going to get from an education. We can't ever be sure what what you know the 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 institution is going to offer us. What a particular session is going to to help us to learn. Uh, because you know, back to that thing of, of, of agency and, and individuals and particulars, we come we come at it with a with a set of stuff, and we process the material that we find through our our way of of dealing with it, uh, and we take from that and we go into something else, and hopefully, um, hopefully with a with a kind of a stronger sense of who we are and what we're about, and that notion of you know. I hope that notion of what is to be, but, um, but and also I think uh, I'd I'd hope a, a more nuanced worldview 
I'd mm. like to imagine. Um, I think it's. I, I, I don't think. Well, I don't think a worldview cannot be more nuanced as a result of education. Well, we, well, it depends on the education, doesn't it? But but that would be my hope. And so yeah. and so, I'm I'm just coming to this down through this conversation is. I think one of the reasons why I was keen to reflect on the network making activity and also try to be disciplined about making sure it was ambiguous is, is, is for me, whilst in one sense it was a bunch of people attaching string and pegs and labels to things, yeah. in another sense I think it was like a kind of reification or realisation of, of some of the... some of the ideology or philosophy we're talking about. So it was like a realisation of of what higher education should or could be for me. You know, opinions vary on that. Yeah. And that's why I was really anxious about it. It was also why I was pleased when I saw some of the things we're talking about happening. Mm. And it would be, you know, and as I say, the people involved, some of those people were sort of masters of negotiating ambiguity. I don't think everybody was, though. Um... And there was, and so there was, there was a, there's a, 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 a if, if I'm going to look at it like almost selfishly, um, I, the, that, it, I was pleased that it, that it became the thing that I, in, in, in that, in that sense that it represented stuff that was important to me about education. Mm. So it is just a little activity at an event that a few people did. Yeah. But it, it embodied quite a lot of stuff that I feel is important about, and certainly the way this institution operates, but also more broadly, things that I think that are important for the sector to consider around ambiguity, yeah. making, playfulness, reflection. And you know, as you're saying, th- that requires us to um, be comfortable to be not entirely in control, to take those kind of risks, but also it involves certain levels of trust and an acknowledgement that whilst um, you can sort of quantify the value, as you say, through assessment, and that's important, you're not going to be able to quantify everything that happened. Mm. You know, it's always going to be greater than what you can apply a framework to, which is actually quite encouraging, I suppose. I would say it's hugely encouraging. I would say that, that, you know... I think I'm really pleased that that it did embody to some extent the things that you hoped for, uh, and I think that that's that's where sometimes the risk pays off is that you are able to be satisfied that it that things have done something that that you hope that they might. Well, I want to go and interview everybody who took part and oh, find out absolutely. what they thought about it. Yeah. But I, I and you know I'm not going to have that opportunity, and in some senses you just got to let that go. Mm-hmm. But I'm confident that but you saw but, you saw it at the time, right? Yeah, you, I saw you, it at you, the time. You could feel it in the room. Yes, I mean, I, and I'm using that word deliberately. You yeah. could you could sense it in the room, oh. not across, not evenly across everyone, but you could sense that um, we that what we'd done is create some conditions that encourage people to kind of explore, uh, you know, roughly around themes that were to do with that day. And and so by you know, it took me a long time to recover from that event. <laughs> mm-hmm. But on reflection, I, I I'm confident in going that did what I hoped it would do, mm-hmm. even though I deliberately didn't hope for anything specific. It's in hindsight I can say it did, mm-hmm. uh, and that was a that's that's I think that's fairly new for me actually. Mm. So, so given that that recognition of of the of the process, how would you encourage people to explore those sorts of things that they're wanting to in ways that they're slightly uncertain about the outcome of? I mean, might there might there be a I don't know what what can you take from that that you could? I think, yeah. That's a really good question, and um, there's a no- there are a number of things. Uh, I think the first one is, you know, it, 
don't see ambiguity as a lack. You know, it's not it's not you being unprofessional or not planning. It's it it, it ambiguity is like this very delicate potential that you're putting into the room, mm-hmm. quite an exciting potential. So there's there's that you know trust trust in ambiguity mm-hmm. if you like. I think the other the other things trust as well is trust in the people that are engaging in it yeah. that they're cap- that they do have agency that they're capable of interpreting that they'll bring something to it that you haven't thought of mm-hmm. and that that will happen um, and then um, I I think I mean you mentioned this this to me before mm-hmm. and you were referring to a colleague who'd done a really good job of this is the the few sentences that you say to start something off are really important and to really think those through uh, in a way that will um, encourage people to play and explore but not shut down the ambiguity because my temptation was to go was to say those few sentences and then and then there's a little gap and I go so you could get some scissors yeah. and you could get a bit of string and you could put it there and then you could put that there it's just an example I'm just making an example here and and I didn't mm-hmm. and that was a good thing mm-hmm. but it took a lot of, a lot of effort to not go and now I'm going to explain how I do this yeah so I so I suppose the short version of the answer is is, is trust mm-hmm. and preparation. There's a, it's a it's a it's a weird form of preparation. Absolutely. Yeah, it is. It, you're it, right. It, it, it's it. You you have to do a lot of you have to put a lot of thought in it. Yeah. Into it, and then it doesn't produce very much stuff, mm. right? So you know, I didn't give a twenty minute talk. I said mm. about three or four sentences, mm. and there was part of me that wanted to go. It t- this took a lot of work. Actually, it took a long. You know, it might look like some pegboards. Is- String and me just saying three sentences, but this took a lot of. Di- I mean, there was a lot of discussion between you, myself, Sheena, her students, mm-hmm. um, a lot of note writing. Mm-hmm. I drew diagrams, mm-hmm. you know, and then you get to the room and you're like, okay, we're going to do this thing. Off you go. And we spent a day in the workshop making stuff. We spent a, what? Yeah, we spent a day in the workshop actually making stuff, preparing stuff for the, the making event, then dragging bits of wood down a road in. Camberwell yeah. slash Peckham. Yeah. So, and it was a really hot day. <laughs> so, so what? I'm trying to answer your question. So, I think you just have to be comfortable. You've got to step back mm-hmm. and be and and trust that people are going to respond. But that's not to say, as as you rightly point out, that that there's a lot of preparation involved in creating those spaces where that can happen. Mm-hmm. And I'd argue probably. And this is why it's difficult. Probably more preparation than doing a straight workshoppy sort of session. Yes, it probably is. It was really hard work. And 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 as you say, you you can be very much less certain of the outcome of it. Yeah, because there's the risk. It, it's it's a huge risk, or or there is the ambiguity uh, as well, because you're you know you're putting in this work for possibly no return. Except you're, you can be fairly confident if you have thought it through and you're doing it for the right reasons, and your your um, your beliefs in why you're doing it and why you're presenting it in this way are strong. I think you can probably have a degree of belief, trust that actually something will happen, but you might not see it. Yeah, and and that's a, that's a good point. So there's trust in ambiguity. There's trust in the agency of the people that you're working with. Yeah. There's 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 the kind of humility in in not going on about mm. <laughs> a stepping back basically. Yes. Yeah. But there's also a sense that it that of uh, of sincerity to it. Yeah. And that it needs to intersect with your own beliefs around what you think education yeah. is otherwise it becomes a piece of play for the sake of play yeah. uh, and, and I think people are very sensitive to that so I mean I know you know we've all been in sessions where you're like let's do a fun thing and then and then after 10 minutes they go right we're going to stop doing this fun thing and actually do the thing yeah. and you can feel it can't you yep. now my hope is with the way that we approach this is that it was clear that this was was both a kind of playful thing, but also integral to the point of the day. Yeah. And it wasn't 
the thing that we did to warm up before we did the thing. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I don't know how people would. Some people might have responded to it that way. Maybe. But I think I think you know the, the point that you make or we make about preparation is is really important because I think as educators we spend a lot of time complaining about the amount of preparation that we go in that we put into sessions. Sure. Uh, that isn't recognised. Right. Uh, and isn't something that that um, we don't get any thanks for it. And I'm coming to realise, or well, I mean, this is this is a hypothesis maybe, that actually the the preparation is really our creative endeavour, the work that we are doing. So, you know, we spent time preparing it, it was it was hard work, it was fun though. You know, the kind of the conversation around it and the bouncing ideas back and forth and the physically constructing things, it, it's fun. And I think very often we overlook the I mean, you know, this this is me, right? But very often we overlook the importance of process. We we very often kind of think that that you know we've got to get to the end, and the product that we deliver is the thing that's going to be seen, and that's the yeah. that's the kind of the crux of the matter. But actually, the preparation that goes into something when you are batting those ideas around and, and are kind of working out sort of what you're trying to achieve and sort of what you want people to experience and and why that is that's incredibly important to us as educators. If we're going to be working in this environment where we're talking to people about ideas and, and, and you know, making stuff, ideas is also stuff, right? It's yeah. also material that yeah. we have. And, and the process of, 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 of planning and dismissing and saying, you know what, I could say a whole load of stuff around this and I'm not going to. Yeah. I'm just going to leave it in that place. I'm going to leave it unsaid. I can sit in my back pocket if you yeah. want, and it's there for later or whatever else. Same thing we say to students. You know, not every idea has to be represented in the thing that you produce. You select. Yeah. You kind of. You, you kind of. And, and the, the 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 process of 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 thinking and and generating and then editing and then selecting and then choosing and then thinking. Well, this is the reason. And 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 that sort of sense of you know this is this is why I'm here. I'm here because I want to kind of do something with you and I hope you're here because you want to do something and then we'll do something and I'll get something from it and you'll get something. You know, this, this, that, that's where the, the, the kind that's of the the negotiation, negotiation comes yeah. in. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I think that's a good place to, to sort of wrap this up because... Uh, in the preparation. The preparation, yeah. Well, I mean, I, mean, I think that idea of the, the, the preparation is, is, the, is the work. Uh, or is a large part of the work and that education isn't a product in that sense uh, is, it, it is quite helpful and, and, and positive and uh, I'll, it certainly helps me think differently about some of my approaches towards work whereby I don't recognise the work that I'm doing because I've forgotten that it's that process that makes the thing, Right. And you can easily get drawn into that if you're writing something or if you're putting together a lecture or a talk or something like that. And it becomes quite product-y. Yeah. And so the, the, the longer that you prepare, the more you feel like you're failing. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Well, I mean, maybe that's just personal to me. Yeah. But I'm like, how come this took me four hours? It should have only taken me 20 minutes. Yeah. Feels like It begins to feel like a failing because I'm thinking about the product being the work. Yeah not the process being the work. And I mean work in the best possible sense. And I suppose when it comes to the network making activity, that we went through a process to, to sort of make appear, if you like, because um, I don't want to use the word produce now, <laughs> is, is um, the, that activity clearly wasn't a product. It, it, it was the creation of a, of a space that people could negotiate meaning in. Mm. And again, to me, that sounds like higher education, or I'd hope it's higher education. Mm. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think that's, that's, that's a good way of drawing this to a close.